The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Hello and welcome once again to the Frankencast. I'm the mad scientist, Anthony Bowman. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined as always by... The mummy who's dressed just like Elvis, that is Eric Velasquez. My pronouns are he, him. Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was worth it, right? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, so this week we are talking about the 1995 movie called Monster Mash, as we mentioned last week, Mm -hmm. um, which is actually a uh, sort of adaptation of a like musical play from the 60s i believe 60s or 70s that's called like sorry the bridge is out you'll have to stay the night which right what heck of a name (laughs) yeah uh which you know was also written and starring for uh bobby boris pickett who who is in this as well Mm -hmm. uh and it's actually like i noticed there's a lot of parallels between this and like rocky horror picture show there a lot so, so are we saying Rocky Horror lifted their <laughs> premise from the play? Because I feel like there's a lot of through line. A yeah, lot. It feels like, I mean, I, you know, I know the whole, like, you know, couple getting stuck in the rain and having to stay somewhere for the night mm-hmm. is, is a common a trope. horror trope. Yeah. But it feels a little more, like, it, more than just that basic uh, basic trope here. There's, there's a lot more yeah, going on. There, I mean, it's very campy. Uh, a musical, odd sexual tension. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I think this might be kind of a chicken and egg situation where there was the the play first, right? And then maybe Rocky Horror lifted from that. But this clearly lifted back. <laughs> it was like, yeah. ah, I see what you're doing. I'm taking that too. Yeah, because this was definitely rewritten. Like, I mean, there's a lot of like 90s references and stuff in it. But yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, th- I think you're right. I think this is like a, they kind of hopscotched off of each other. Right. Well, you know what that means. It means uh, we're going to have to come full circle eventually, right? We're going to have to get another another Rocky Horror p- Picture Show based on this. I, there was, I know there was that recent Rocky Horror Picture yeah. like on TV, but I didn't watch it. I'm not sure how that turned I out. Don't, I don't know that anybody did. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but this is wild. This is like, okay, I wouldn't necessarily say this movie is stacked with A-listers, because I don't think any of these people were ever A-listers. I mean, probably the closest one we have is Bobby Pickett and maybe Jimmy Walker. Okay? Mm -hmm. J.J. Good Times Walker, for those of you know. Um, (laughs) But, I mean, at this time, we do have two people that are at least at the height of their popularity. One being Candace Cameron. (laughs) What? (laughs) DJ from Full House? What? (laughs) And then we got the Crypt Keeper himself, John Kassir. Yeah. Whoa. And he's so much fun in this. I, I am I am angry at the world. I am I am angry at the world that we didn't just get an Igor show. <laughs> yeah, that would have been amazing. Yeah. He was a he he chewed the shit out of every scene he was in. Mm-hmm. No no regrets. No no stopping at all. Like he he was, you could call him uh, pork because he hammed it up. <laughs> okay. And this is real, like, I don't know that I have seen any other thing where, like, he gets nearly this much screen time. No. Yeah. I mean, I feel it's a travesty that he didn't get to, to get to the levels of Jim Carrey because I feel like he probably could have got close. He definitely could have surpassed Chris Kattan. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, for what that's worth. All right. <laughs> So let's talk about this. So, yeah, we open, and, like, obviously we're hearing the Monster Mash because, you know, of course. 
uh and but so we there's like a full moon and we see that there's like a teen couple in a truck they're a little bit arguing not much uh they're they're on their way to a halloween party and they're lost but he thinks they're not yeah we actually get a voiceover i didn't see this but is this wolfman jack because it sounds like it's trying to be wolfman jack yeah, it's either it either is him or it's somebody doing an impression of him, and they even call right. themselves the Wolfman. Wolf I'm pretty sure. Right. But yeah, so like they're they're listening to the Monster Mash over the radio, and then yeah, like you said, the DJ interjects. Ultimately, they end up they turn down a road that says dead end, and they don't see that, and then the truck dies. Right. Of course, as as you do. <laughs> right. Uh, and it's raining, so there's like all that kind of going on, and they're like, "Oh, well, there's there's this one, there's a house up ahead with lights on. We could go there and maybe call for help, and uh, you know, get the truck taken care of and, and get out of here." Mm-hmm. Uh, so they they head to the house. You hear like wolves howling in the distance. You are setting the the spooky mood. Yeah, of course, but they're like, "Oh, it's just a dog, maybe a big wolf like dog." <laughs> right. Uh, and so they ring the doorbell at the house, and for some reason, it the the doorbell is somewhere over the rainbow. I'm not really sure. Yeah, what's up with that? That's kind <laughs> of a cheery. Like, yeah, it felt like a weird reference in the midst of what we've got going on here. Mm-hmm. And the door is answered by John Cassier as Igor, the hunchbacked assistant. Oh, so good, right from the word go. <laughs> and so he's expecting a delivery of a body, and so he's like, "All right, bring the body in." And then he's like, "Oh wait, you're not the body delivery." Um, right, hmm. that's no bo- that's no body. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, and so he's like, as soon as he realizes they're not who he's expecting, he's like, "Go, get, get out of here! You need to leave right now!" And they're like, "We, we just need to answer. Or we need to make a phone call, and we'll leave." And he's like, "We don't have a phone. There's nobody here. You just go." Uh, but of course, then we hear the voice, the uh, the Karloff esque voice uh, himself, Bobby Boris Pickett. Yeah, so he's uh, obviously playing uh, the mad scientist here, and he's like, who's at the door, Igor? Well, he's uh, not just a mad scientist. He is Victor Frankenstein. Yes, uh, which I, I thought was kind of, a you know, I was thinking about it in, in um, Mad Monster Party. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the the Dr. Frankenstein character is specifically Dr. Boris Frankenstein. Right. They, they make that reference. And later on, he'll sing the Monster Mash and say, tell them Boris sent you. Uh, but he's not Boris. He's Victor Frankenstein. What? Yeah. We're so confu- Well, I mean, he is Boris. He's Bobby Boris. But, <laughs> right. you know, he's also Dr. Fr- Victor Frankenstein. This guy's got a lot of names. He needs to slow down. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, so he comes to the door as well, you know, and is like doing the same thing. Like, I tell him to go ahead and bring the body in. And he's like, oh, OK, that's not who he thought. But why don't you come on in? You're welcome. We'll, we'll get you taken care of. Yeah, and as the you whole... mentioned, he's, he's def- uh, I'm sorry. As you mentioned, Igor's trying to warn, ward them off the entire time. Yeah, like at first he's war- warning them away by himself, but then as soon as Victor answers the door, he's behind him, like motioning, <laughs> like "Go yeah. away, run, now, hurry!" And like every time, like Victor turns back, he you know he like freezes and tries to act like he's not doing all these wild motions mm-hmm. behind him. Yep. So they come on in, and or, <laughs> there is a great joke where he's like, "You're Victor Frankenstein of the Transylvania Frankenstein." <laughs> no, of the Henniesport Frankenstein's. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, they, they come inside, Victor calls AAA for them, uh, mm-hmm. but while he's on the phone, there's all these, like, sort of party goers kind of around. Uh, there's a lot of, like, we'll find out that they're basically just, like, backup dancers Monsters. for, for all yeah. the musical numbers, but they're just, like, women in, like, bikini tops and little skirts lounging around. And one I of think them... eventually we'll find out they're the Draculettes. <laughs> right. Or at least that's what uh, Hathaway will dub them. Yeah. At the very least. And they have basically no, you know, they don't get have names. They don't have lines. They're right. just dancers. Uh, but in this one instance, one of them yanks the phone cord out of the wall very sneakily. Uh, and, you know, Victor's like, uh-oh, I guess the, the a line must be down. The phone is dead. Dead. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, well, we'll just go back to the truck and just try to, like, flag somebody down. And uh, Igor's like, all right. And so he goes to open the door and just gets, like, a huge splash of water in the face. Right. And that's when we find out the title of the play, The Bridge is Out. <laughs> right. 
So, yep. So everybody just suddenly breaks into song. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they say, <laughs> yeah, they sing the song. The bridge is out. You'll have to spend the night. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a whole big thing. Like, you know, it's the song is basically just repeating over and over again that you're going to have to stay like we can't. There's no other option. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the midst, we meet Dracula and his uh, bride who will eventually. Natasha. Yeah, we'll eventually learn as Natasha slash, you know, nasty. Uh, <laughs> right? So, I mean, you know, if the if the shoe fits, you wear it, you know? Yeah. They both sort of, like, latch on to their, you know, respective teens, you know, so Dracula's right. after the girl, uh, and, you know, and Natasha's after the guy. Yeah, who, partner of the opposite sex. Yeah, and we get their names are Scott and Mary, but they also, they're dressed as Romeo and Juliet, Juliet. for this party, so people just call them Romeo and Juliet throughout the yeah, play. Yeah, f- for a while I'm like, oh, this kid's literally named Romeo, but then she's like, no, Scott. Oh, okay. All right, he actually has a real name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we also meet um, a werewolf and his mother, who is like a Romani lady, or, or right. seems to be. Right, Wolfie. Yeah. Literally just Wolfie's mom. <laughs> that's that's the character's name. And she's got more of a part in this than he does. Yeah, he really does. Uh, and he's all worried. So, like, this is kind of in that universal vein where, like, this werewolf wants to be cured so he's mm. hoping that victor is going to be able to help him with that and he needs his dosage up because tonight's a full moon and he's going to transform yeah well of course this is the american uh health system so victor can't treat him exactly because he already has a pre-existing condition <laughs> being <laughs> like anthropy how depressing is that 1995 ouch <laughs> yeah this is when people could afford their medicine right yeah. So this song, the chorus of it is literally, they just say over and over again, sorry, the bridge is out. You'll have to spend the night. Like mm-hmm. that phrase is said in the song a good 20, 30 times at least. Right. And then as soon as the song ends, Mary's like, did they say spend the night? <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to say they did, Mary. Yeah, just a few dozen times. So, yeah, Scott's like, yeah, we're, we're stuck. We're just going to have to... I know that everybody's kind of weird, but it's a Halloween adventure. Let's just kind of ride with it and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Then we get a fun little bit where uh, the mother is basically telling Wolfie to go off and keep himself busy and throw literally throws him a bone. <laughs> right. And we get a funny joke about, hey, where'd you get the old bag? Uh, as someone was picking up a bag. And um, I believe it's Victor who says she was referred to me by an associate. <laughs> So, ouch, ouch, okay. And then, of Uh, course, we get, for some reason, Igor playing the hookah pipe. Like, it's like bagpipes, but it's also a hookah. (laughs) Yeah, and it's like, so he, like, you know, puts the the hookah tube thing to his mouth, and then he starts, like, squeezing his own hump to be the bagpipe. (laughs) Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's very campy and very cartoonish, clearly. We get moments with, like, Victor and Igor are talking about the two teens and, the, you know, that, like, basically, this is the body parts we need to finish everything because he's yeah, got this creature. The brain. Yeah, the boy's brain because the, the creature doesn't, the, the brain's no good. Um, and we also get sort of, like, the first inclinations that, like, Igor is interested in Mary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he wants the girl, which is kind of gross, you know? Yeah. Not because he has a hump, just because he's objectifying her like that. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of... I mean, pretty much all of the male characters in this want yeah. want Mary for one reason or another. And only... Well, I guess to be fair, most of the female characters want Scott, at least at one point. Yeah, that's but true. Usually, but usually it's like, eh, we're done with you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, pretty much right after that, we get, like, Dracula talking about that he wants these teens because he's been stuck in America for a while and wants to go back to Transylvania but first he must drink the blood of a virgin why? just because I think (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) he just wants to he does complain that there's a critical shortage of virgins in that's true ever uh, ever since he let Madonna move in (laughs) (laughs) right Um, yeah so you know, he he wants Mary for that, and Victor's like, no, you know, back off. If you interfere, my years of research will be in vain. Mm-hmm. In vain, no pun yeah, intended. Yeah, uh, 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 you uh. see what I did there? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's a joke I would make. 
And so Dracula agrees, and he says, Scout's honor, and then under his what? breath... I'm not like, even a scout. Yeah. <laughs> Never was. So then, you know, Igor is... Or I, I think Victor tells Igor to show the, the, the kids to their rooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're going to have separate rooms because they're not married, and this house is still, you know, there's still rules. They're very conservative. Yeah, we well, we got to keep the virgins virgins, right? Right. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of uses for virgins, apparently. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, all we need is the Sanderson sisters, and we've, we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. We've got the full Monty. And yeah, so then so Scott is going in Victor's father's room. Yeah, the he, blue room. Yeah, and he was once the master of this castle until he died at about two thirty p.m. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, a great joke. Yeah, so so Igor locks Scott in and then is taking Mary to her room and is like, "So do you love him?" And she's like, "Well, love's a strong word, right?" So, of course, uh, this gives Igor hope. You know. Yeah, he's like, I wouldn't know. No one's ever loved me. How could, how could anyone love a man with such a twisted body? Yeah, and then we have a little bit of a joke about he's like, maybe Claudia Schaefer. And then she's like, no, Ju- more like Julia Roberts. And then Sun Yi. Let me look up Sun Yi. Because I feel like I know what this is, and that's kind of gross. Yeah, it, it's exactly who you think it is. Yep, yep. Yeah. Woody, Woody Allen's wife. Not yep. that she's gross. What happened to her was gross. Yeah, yeah. This is Woody yeah. Allen's stepdaughter who then yeah. married him. Stepdaughter later. wife? Yeah. Well, adopted daughter wife, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, Anthony, you want to brush your hair? Because I think we need to do a little grooming. Anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty gross, but yeah, I mean, obviously this joke is at Woody Allen's expense, so I, I'm I'm I'll here for the yeah, um, but yeah, so then you know, Mary's like, but it, besides, it's what's on the inside that counts, and he's like, you mean a pus-filled calcium deposit <laughs> hump, <laughs> and she's like, oh yeah, maybe not too much, <laughs> and then we get the wonderful song "Play Your Hunch," which, <laughs> ow, right. Yeah, so, it, like, it starts, and, like, Mary is singing to Igor and, like, you know, kind of trying to be encouraging, like, you know, play your hunch, and, you know, you'll find, you know, you'll find the right person who, you know, who wouldn't even notice that you have a hump, you know, and, uh, but then she kind of, like, is sort of, as, as she's doing her verse, she's sort of, like, creeping backwards, like, right. I want to get out of this conversation, <laughs> She's and like, then, yeah, you can get with anybody. Just maybe not me. I'm just going to go back here now. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly, like, the screen goes, like, black and white, and Igor has, like, a tux and a top hat, and he just sort of takes over the up. song. Yeah, he and, stands up and straight. Yeah, and he gets, like, his whole sort of dance number. The, the girls show up. They're dancing with him, and he's, like, you know, sort of encouraging himself, you know, like, that I can do this. I can find a lady who will like me. Yeah. And, uh, but like ultimately, I think it, it ends with like the girls all like holding him up horizontally in that like, you know, showgirl kind of pose. Right. Uh, and then and Victor it, yells for him. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, the creature got out again. We're going to have to, we're going to have to track him down. Um, and we're going to have to use, uh, or no, I've, Igor's like, I think what we need to do is use Romeo's brain in the creature. That'll fix everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, Victor's and Victor's like, like that's a terrible idea. Uh, and then instantly just is like, hey, I have an idea. What if we use... Uh, right. But <laughs> he lit- Yeah, he does... By the way, he did this earlier with the uh, let's give them slumber powder in their drinks. Uh, and then Igor said that initially. And then Victor was like, you idiot! We should give them slumber powder in their drinks. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, like their their relationship is pretty clearly that like Igor's actually the smart one, but mm-hmm. he sort of because he's the disfigured one, he has to be the dumb sidekick. And so Victor just steals all of his ideas. Yeah. You know, that makes a lot of sense, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely true to life. Yeah, no doubt. And there's a tiny little gag here, though, because when when Victor tries to steal his idea, he says, we should use Romero's brain. Right, not Romeo, Romero. (laughs) Uh, So get a little little, uh, zombie humor there. Yeah, also, he threads him uh, asking if the name Kevorkian means anything to him. (laughs) 
That's mean because that guy just did assisted suicides. <laughs> he didn't actually murder people. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, it's just, yeah, it's definitely the first of many. Just like, hey, here's a '90s reference because it's the '90s. Well, I guess the Madonna is really the first of the '90s reference. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, we get Madonna, we get uh, Kevorkian, we'll get like the Clintons later. Yeah, but I, I I'll say Romero has to be a, a joke uh, on George Romero. Oh, well. absolutely. Yeah, um, but so then we kind of like uh, Victor does have the idea that okay, so what we'll do is we'll move. Scott's brain into the creature, and then since Igor is in love with Mary, we'll move Igor's brain into Scott, Scott. so now he can have the, the young, handsome, teen, you know, body that Mary is already, you know, in a relationship with, and then right. Igor can just take over. And then we could dump the monster's brain into Igor's body. Yeah, just because, yeah, might as well. Like, he, he pretty much just says, like, well, yeah, we'll just do a round robin, because there's not really any reason not to. <laughs> right. <laughs> And and of course, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and then we get like one of those sort of just like dumbest gags that I still laugh so hard at, uh, where like they're they're kind of in the lab and Igor touches this lever next to this like electric chair. Wait, wait, uh, wait! We never ever pull the lever. <laughs> never ever. Ne- forever. It, it could sever our endeavor. <laughs> And of course, the monster goes brever, <laughs> and then we get the introduction of Hathaway with very clever. Yeah, so Hathaway, played by as you said, Jimmy Walker, the guy who is ma- mainly known for just yelling dynamite a lot. Yeah, dynamite, <laughs> and if you're of a special ilk, you know him from the Giver, <laughs> not right. MacGyver, the Giver. Yeah, if you know, you know. And so Hathaway is kind of a strange character. Like, there's not really any sort of horror analog for him but basically his deal is he is like a promoter or manager for a the for king El- right? yeah for elvis the mummy <laughs> right so they kind of merge like you know dead elvis with like the king like mm-hmm. king tut but um yeah so he kind of they're gonna revive this Elvis mummy and start his career over again. But what do they need? They need the blood of a virgin. Of course. Yep. <laughs> and Victor's like, I, I don't have time for this. I've got I've already got a lot on my plate here with my mad science stuff. And <laughs> there's the line you have violated the seven seals of the jackal. Including, including LaToya. Latoya. Hell yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So, you know, Hathaway is like, okay, fine, we, we'll we'll figure something else out. Uh, and, you know, Victor's like, you can come to dinner, but you can't have the virgins. Right. Uh, and Elvis can't, Elvis is not invited to the dinner. He gets on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, we got to lose the king as he's got a, he, his, uh, he sticks out like a sore thumb because he's in bandages. Ha, cha, 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 cha. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so then uh, we have, uh, Scott and Mary, they're you know they're locked in their respective rooms, and they realize that they can kind of talk through a vent. They do a little sweet little comforting, you know. They they talk to each other, comfort each other, and kind of declare their love to a degree. Yeah, and then that of course leads to them breaking into song, and they have kind of like a duet. It's like on a night like this, and it's right. just about how much they miss each other and they want to be together again. And they sort of like dance around their rooms separately, sort of. Uh, I think Scott's got an IV pole that he's dancing with. Yeah, and, and uh, Mary decides to open this little cabinet that has a <laughs> skeleton. Yeah. Just squatting there. Yeah, just a full skeleton. And so then, yeah, when the when the song ends, she says, she tells him, she's like, uh, so Scott, I got to tell you, there's a skeleton in my closet. Yeah, I have and, some skeletons in my closet. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. That's yeah. fine. She's like, no, there's like femurs and skulls <laughs> Whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, and and they also, while this is all going on, like the creature is walking around in in the walls. So there's a part where he hears them talking through the vents. Uh, and he kind of like grunts and sort of like gives them the suggestion that maybe they should try to escape after dinner. Then they're like, oh, yeah, we, we should escape after dinner. Like it was the other person suggesting that. Yeah. And then we also see that Dracula is like standing outside of Mary's room, kind of like <laughs> thinking about breaking in and biting her or whatever. But Natasha shows up and stops him. 
And she's like, if you get up to this kind of cheating nonsense again, I'm going to get a lawyer and I'm going to take everything from you. Ah, he's such a bloodsucker. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he go, he's just like, but, you know, it's I have these appetites that I must quit. Like, he's just a, a dirt bag. Yeah, uh, pretty and, much. And he goes through this and he's like, but uh, honey, I swear, any time that I'm with those and he starts listening, like those Dude, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, this is it, gross. He says prepubescent, pubescent. in there. E! Uh, yeah, Woody Allen like, must have been part of this, <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyway. But like the the like he lists all of these like what he deems positive qualities in a you know in a woman. Uh, but uh, when he's with these girls, really, he's just thinking of Natasha. <laughs> right? What a dick. Yeah. Uh. And, that somehow like she's like oh honey like it you know, like that sways her a little bit somehow yeah um and then they break into another dance number um the eternity the, blues yeah and it's just like about how you know when you're when you've been alive forever you got to do things to spice things up and sometimes those things are terrible and... yep i guess <laughs> yeah that's pretty much the the thesis of that song and it's you know it's a as the title would suggest it's a blues song Mm-hmm. There's a part where like the dancing girls sing and they're like, maybe you should stake Natasha, right? Yeah, which is like, yeah, what? What did she ever do? Like, that's not fair. Um, and he's like, I've I've thought about that. I, I'd like to, but I can't because she can't be killed unless I'm, I'm destroyed killed. first. <laughs> so it's a mutually assured destruction sure. from them. Gosh, that's that relationship's ultra toxic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get Igor going to let Mary out for dinner. And as soon as he opens the door, she smashes a bottle on his head. Which is always great. Yeah, and he's like, oh, she likes me. She really likes me. Likes me. me. Uh, and and uh, now we have to go down for some horse devours. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and she's like, you mean hors d'oeuvres? And he's like, you uh, don't know the cook. The cook. Hey. <laughs> Um, so then they go to let Scott out. He does the same thing. Well, it's, first Igor's like, ah, cause he thinks that Mary's about to hit him again with the face. He's like, ah, ah, ah I, I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> and then yeah, and, Scott just brains him. <laughs> yeah. And so then they're all kind of standing in the hallway and Mary's like, so Scott, you should, we should come with him cause we're going to hors d'oeuvres and after hors d'oeuvres is dinner. And then, you know, yeah. You and know, he, you know. Yeah, and Igor's like, oh, interesting. She's an easy date. Yeah, which that's not fun. No. That's not, uh, not a good thing to say. Yeah. Um, but so then, you know, everybody kind of meets downstairs for dinner. Everybody's around the table. Dracula introduces everyone to his wife, Natasha. And Natasha uh, introduces herself to Scott, calling her, hey, you could call me nasty. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of like. for you, and, Natasha. <laughs> Yeah, it reminded me of like the you know the Janet Jackson thing. You know, the mm. name's Janet, Miss Jackson. If you're nasty, but now mm. it's just nasty, nasty. if you're nasty. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we get Dracula and Natasha are sort of like bickering with each other across the table. Well, yeah, um, there's the joke about pigs in a blanket, wimp in a cape. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, and then we get um, Wolfie's mom, who is also talking to Mary, and she. Uh, she wants to like she like reads mary's palm and is like oh wonderful it's not too late yeah which yeah you know the implication (laughs) she she hasn't had a chance to not be a virgin anymore right so uh so then you know we've got victor talking to scott and he's like tell me a little bit about your brain i mean yourself (laughs) and so like you know scott's going through his like his grades and his well you know all that and he's like what about your hat size what five, uh, five nine and a half or something like that? Yeah, and Victor's like, ah, oh, this is gonna be perfect. Perfect, <laughs> <laughs> amazing. And of course, we also have Wolfie being uh, going into almost werewolf mode. He's got uh, a significant growth. His five o'clock shadow hit about ten p.m. already. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, the mom is like, so I'm, I'm reading your fortune. I see a new man in your life. He's got a beard and a hairy back and multiple personalities. Robin Williams. (laughs) Oh, that made me sad. Yeah. RFE. Too sad. Uh, Um, and so, you know, 
then like Hathaway bursts in and he's like, I just, I'm the promoter of the King of Kings and I want to introduce you to him. And so it's just everybody's fighting over. They want these teens. Clearly, right. that's that's kind of the central thing here, uh, specifically because they're virgins, uh, and yeah. you know for different purposes. But yeah, same basic idea here. Yeah, basically, it's most of the 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 guy monsters are now surrounding Mary, and Natasha just got Scott to herself. <laughs> right. And so then we do see. Yeah, there's a scene that Scott is like. He's like playing the piano, and Natasha kind of comes out and starts flirting with him, mm-hmm. and starts. Wolfie, of course, Wolfie uh, goes up to Mary and is like, "Men are such dogs." <laughs> yeah, because that's fun. Yeah, because Mary's seeing this, and of course, like she, for the most part in this, Scott is not really doesn't seem interested in Natasha yeah. mostly, uh, but it keeps looking like he is because Mary sees these moments of Natasha flirting with him. Right. It's it's kind of like that uh, one meme online where you have the the boyfriend of a girl playing piano for a whole family and smiling while they're looking at him, but once they all look away, he looks at the camera and he's like grimacing. <laughs> he's like this shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, so yeah, but like uh, Wolfie is like, you know, I'm not like other guys. You know, I, I'm. <laughs> Uh, you know, but women don't want to be with me because of my condition. And again, Mary's like put in this position where she's got to comfort these guys who, uh, you know, yeah. need need women to do all the emotional labor for them, basically. I mean, she suggests a way for him to take care of himself, you know, a depilatory or uh, he could use. This is a 90s throwback for you. A Floby, <laughs> right. which is basically a pair of like. Uh, not shears, I guess, with a vacuum cleaner attachment that just sucks all the hair away so it doesn't get on your clothes. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, And we do find out that his name is actually Wolfgang. Wolfgang. Um, And, you know, so then I think we cut away to Victor and Igor talking again, and, you know, he's like, okay, during dinner, you've got to give them the potion. And for some reason, Igor is now wearing, like, a Shriner fez. Yeah, what's up? Why did we get that? Probably because John Kassir just wanted to. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's he just wears it for the next that. couple scenes, and then that's and then it's just gone again, and that's it. Like so, everybody's kind of sitting sitting down to dinner, and Victor is like going on and on about his experiments and how he's brilliant and you know just kind of bragging and doing the sort of the villain monologue thing. Yeah, well, he he says something that at the time was probably cool, but now has a has some dark undertones. Uh, he wants to take his place amongst the great uh, sir, uh, doctors of all time. Pasteur, Salk, and Cosby. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Right, which, yeah, it's it actually fits better now than it did when they made the joke. Yeah. Uh, or at least better than the public knew when they made the joke. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah, so there's just a lot of, like, little conversations and, like, sexual tension during the, te- you know, during dinner. Well, they uh, offered to serve Dracula wine. He's like, no, nah, I don't want to, I don't drink wine, but I would like a Virgin Mary. <laughs> yeah yeah let's keep driving that one home yeah and so clearly mary's really uncomfortable scott's kind of uncomfortable as well natasha's you know being pretty aggressive in her flirting i think she like grabs his thigh at some point compares him to hamburger which (laughs) you know some people are into that some people are not know your audience i guess yeah while everybody's kind of arguing igor pops in with these two bubbling goblets that just have all this like you know steam coming out of them Mm -hmm. and you know i think somebody else tries to grab one and he's like no these are special drinks for special guests right uh and he's like all right it's time for a toast and so you know everybody toasts and drinks yeah but when they give you your nobel prize what will you say doc (laughs) right um so then you know this is the perfect opportunity. What would what would Victor Frankenstein tell the Nobel Prize Academy? He would just get up there and sing the Monster Mash. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, this is Bobby Boris Pickett. And it's just literally, I mean, he's lip syncing to the original recording. Oh, yeah. Like, they didn't make a new recording for this. It's, it's the exact song you've heard many times before. Mm-hmm. And there's some weird stuff here. Like, the you got the, the dancing girls. They're singing, like, the, you know, they did the mash part. Uh, and dancing behind him and everything. Uh, but then, like, everybody at the table puts their hands on the table and then, like, moves their hands back and forth like they're 
hands are dancing it's a very strange I yeah I, I, don't, I don't yeah it was it's odd and like uh, somebody saw beetlejuice <laughs> and whenever they did the uh uh what is it called um the tally the, man song yeah they, they were like hold my beer <laughs> you know <laughs> And eventually everybody does get up and dance and like the dances are, are very awkward and strange. By the end of it, uh, Scott and Mary kind of sneak out into the hallway. They're kind of trying to plan their escape, but they're both like yawning. because obviously they've, they've been drugged at this point. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those, it almost feels like, you know, those situations where like you end up getting in a fight with your significant other and it's really just because you're both tired, tired or both hungry <laughs> yeah. or something right uh, uh so they, they get in this like sort of jealous argument they're both jealous of of each other because they've had these flirty relationships with the other vampires or the the wolf man or whatever here right uh, but i mean one good look if they weren't uh literally drugged they'd be like no that person was not enjoying the flirtation that was happening right uh, mary does say something about like well at least dracula cares about my hopes and dreams and my blood type mm-hmm. so that yeah they get in a fight and they're like ah, we never want to see each other again they kind of like part ways and instantly victor and igor are there to comfort mary and they're like oh it's okay and then you know slowly she just kind of like slumps over passed out so then victor's like all right i'm heading down to the lab i'll get the monster ready eeyore takes mary up to put her to bed in the meantime yeah, and we get a little bit of a creepy scene with that because he's uh, trying to teach her to call him in her sleep. He's like, just put your fingers in your mouth, whistle, and bl- or just put your fingers in your mouth and blow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's that, you know, the, I forget what, like that old noir movie where it's like, you know how to whistle, don't you? But like, yeah, uh, the fingers in your mouth and blow thing becomes this, you know, she's like out of it and like slobbering and like right. there's... There's definitely some, yeah, definitely sexual implications there. But he leaves and doesn't, you know, doesn't do anything to her in her, you know, drugged state, which, you know, thank God. But Oh, if only we could say that about Dracula. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Mary in her sleep is like talking. She's having a dream about Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. <laughs> Another 90s reference at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, Dracula comes in and is, like, kind of messing with Mary. Meanwhile, Natasha is doing the same with Scott, and he's having a dream about Cindy Crawford. Yeah, you know, as you do in the 90s. Yeah. Um, And Dracula does end up sort of, like, you know, doing the Dracula hypnosis glamour kind of thing and, like, uh, leads Mary away. And, of course, Natasha's just, she's just blunt with it. She's like, come on, man, be mature. (laughs) Which she won't know won't hurt her. (laughs) Right. So at least, yeah, at least Natasha's not trying to do anything against his will. Um, but yeah, they're both definitely doing the hard sell here on their seductions. Right. Well, you know, at least Dracula has the, uh, I guess, decency is a word, but I don't know if it's the right one, to sing her Toyland <laughs> to help lull her into her uh, hypnosis. Yeah. So I think then, like, Scott basically... Natasha gets the message that he's not interested and she leaves. And so then Scott tries to talk to Mary through the wall again, but Mary's gone. And instead Hathaway is in there. Yep. And he just told Hathaway that, Hey, I'm a, I'm a virgin. I didn't want to tell you that, but you know, so Hathaway's excited. He's got another virgin on his hands. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got some options. So that's great. (laughs) Uh, So then uh, downstairs we have like Dracula and Mary and, you know, she's like completely, completely hypnotized uh and he is like flirting with her natasha shows up and is like trying to convince mary that like he's not worth your time you don't want to mess with him and it's like lady like clearly this one this this girl does not have agency at the moment like you don't need to convince her to leave your husband alone you need to get her to safety right and what what dracula does to kind of drive the point home is like she can make her own decisions right mary yes and she goes yes master because yeah she can't make her decisions right now yeah so then um (laughs) we get a really kind of like strange joke in the midst of this we're we're in the lab and igor's like so matt so master why is this night different from all other nights Um, (laughs) right (laughs) Which, if you don't know, because is a, a reference to a Passover. It's like a yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a like the youngest child at at the Jewish Passover is supposed to say that before they tell the story. Right, and that's why <laughs> that's why Dracula says, "Why, Igor? I thought you were a Unitarian." <laughs> I love the hell out of that joke. <laughs> yeah. 
they you know they get into like so we got to do this the brain swap tonight basically so frankenstein says go you know go up and get romeo for the surgery but he's gone so they're like oh no where could he be (laughs) and then igor's like so probably what happened and he basically (laughs) lists everything that's happened that victor and igor haven't seen right but Uh, of course igor's the idiot (laughs) yeah that's terrible that's a harebrained plot right there yeah, what kind of idiot would come up with a plot like that? You know, right. the writers of it, this sto- story, obviously. It really feels like, you know, Bobby Pickett should be turning directly to the camera at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now we've got Scott who is searching for Mary while Victor and Igor are searching for Scott. They bump into each other and uh, he says something about like, where's my proud Mary? Right, and of course we get, maybe she left a good job in the city, working for the... Yeah, because John Kassir is amazing in this. Yeah, he's like really just having a great time. Mm -hmm. And so while he's doing all this, Scott just looks at Victor and he's like, may I? And Victor nods and Scott just (laughs) slaps him. him. That's so good. Yeah. And so again, even after being slapped, Igor's like behind Victor's back like trying to silently warn scott like you need to get out of here things are about to go very bad for you and scott's like what what's what are you saying and And of course victor's like hey why don't you hand me that candlestick scott (laughs) you know we're good we're good friends why would i ever do anything bad to you you know (laughs) yep so he knocks scott out right (laughs) then we uh we cut to downstairs and we've got wolfgang's mom and she is talking to the monster and is like i you know she's annoyed that victor won't help her boy so she's like i'm gonna set you free and then maybe victor will pay more attention to my son yeah but the monster doesn't just want to go he's like what am i gonna do well he doesn't say that but she's like hey here's some money go get some ice cream (laughs) and she's like i i think i hear the ice cream truck right uh, that would have got me yeah, he takes off. And we should mention, the, the monster in this is very weird looking. <laughs> right. It's, it's like the the face, they have the top of the head and, and the chin, but the middle the middle face got melted a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's it's very pointy, like the chin mm. is very pointy. And there's you know, like, it's very Mac the Night. Yeah, you know there, those old McDonald's commercials? <laughs> right. With the moon, the, literally the moon face guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. And there's no motion. I think we, you know, we talked about that with the um, Yasin version mm-hmm. of that, like the monster just has like a clay face that has no motion. And this is pretty similar. Right. Like the, the lips move up and down and that's it. That's all the motion you get. <laughs> yeah. So the creature takes off and then while she's alone, Wolfgang's mother sings a song that's about like basically the plight of mothers in general, but specifically mothers of monsters. Right. Things a mother goes through. Yeah. So it's just that she just kind of has this solo by herself. There's really nobody else. We don't get the dancing girls. We don't have anybody else participating. She just sings you know her song. She doesn't get a full name, but at least she gets a solo song. Yeah. Yeah, that's There's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we cut to Victor and Igor. They've now, you know, seen that the monster is missing. Uh, and so... <laughs> It's just this kind of like musical chairs where it's like they've got the monster, but they don't have Scott. Now they got Scott and they don't have the monster. monster. And Igor knows he's in trouble because, of course, he's going to get blamed. So he just uh, you got John Kassir doing the Igor voice, doing an impression of Bobby Boris Pickett doing the Boris Karloff voice. (laughs) The layers of impersonation there are deep. Uh, And he's like berating himself and he's like igor you you know you idiot and you know like but then (laughs) so victor's like igor you know calm down you know it's not it's not necessarily your fault you don't need to beat yourself up over this yeah you're being Uh, too hard on yourself yeah there may be a logical explanation and igor's like yeah yeah there probably is and he's like it could possibly be even my fault and igor's like maybe so master and then he's like no of course not and he's just like it's obviously your fault and you know idiot (laughs) so he doesn't want Igor berating himself because he needs he to wants, do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now they, they head back out to go find the monster. And while they're away doing that, Natasha finds Scott, who they have tied up and left. And so she's like, obviously going to take one more chance while, you know, while Scott's tied up, she's going to flirt with him a little bit. And he's just like, I just, let me, let me go. You know, I I need to save Mary. Something's going on here. I don't know what's going on. And Natasha's like, oh yeah, you definitely do. Cause she's gone batty. Yeah. Or she'll go batty any minute now. 
Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, I'll do anything if you'll set me free. And it's the anything kind of deal, you know? Right. And she's uh, like, no, nah, I'm not into, I don't care about that anymore. I'm over that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. She, basically, she's just like, I, really, I just, I want you to rescue Mary because I want her out of here so right. I can have my husband to myself again. Exactly. And of course, Scott's like, all right, I'll, I'll do that. But we get another 90s quote. By the way, this movie confirmed this was released in 95, right? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure the Clinton incident that we all know didn't happen until like 97. Yeah, so this is like the earlier, like lesser, you know, the, the smaller right. Clinton incidents that are the not not the the Monica Clinton incident. <laughs> right. This would be the, uh, the what, Paula Jones. And right. There's somebody, I, forget, I think there's one other lady that, I, I mean, there's probably a handful yeah, of other. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, she's like, uh, to quote Hillary Clinton, you know, he may be a womanizer, but he's all I've got. Yeah, he may be a lot and a womanizer, but he's all I got. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the, 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 we pretty much do in the 90s, so Bill likes what he likes, I guess. I oh, am. Yeah. And it's not Hillary, apparently. <laughs> e. So then we've got, we cut away to Hathaway, who's now kind of like snooping around the house uh, looking for Scott. And somehow he just falls over the balcony. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we did miss a couple parts where literally there was a, a short-lived gag where he was hiding behind the door. And then Scott hits him. And then later when the doctor and Igor are looking for Scott, they basically KO him. So now he's like all banged up. And I guess it's because he's had enough massive head trauma. He just trips <laughs> over the side of the banister. I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, he falls and is laying there, but then the dancing girls come and kind of start, like, patching him and bandaging him up. Yeah, that's when he's basically like, listen, we'll go to Las Vegas. I'll get you a job as the Dra Draculettes. I'll be your manager. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. And then we cut to Igor, who's on the, you know, on the hunt for the monster. Oh, you mean uh, John Kassir hamming it up again. <laughs> Yeah, this bit has no real purpose other no. than, like, let's just let John Kassir do this. Right. I mean, he does the Stella thing from A Streetcar Named Desire. Uh, we get, uh, I'm walking here, I'm walking here. <laughs> yeah, in the matter of, like, a minute, he probably does, like, four or five different celebrity impressions. Right. But you know uh, what? I'm and, here for it. Each and every one. Yeah. And then he does happen to bump into the monster. Uh, and he's like, oh, where have you been? And the monster is like kind of grunting and he's like, all right, let's do charades. So mm -hmm. they go through this whole thing where that doesn't really ever go anywhere. <laughs> like right. the monster kind of, it's like two word or first word sounds like. Uh, sounds and, like catch. Yeah. yeah, it ends up, I think ultimately it gives John Kassir the chance to kind of like guess wrong in some com comedic ways. Uh, but we ultimately find out that, like, the monster was out playing fetch with the the wolf. Yeah, with Wolfie. Yeah. So then we cut away to Scott, who has finally found Mary, and she is still entranced. Not only... So she's, she's entranced, but, like, it's not necessarily directly tied to Dracula, because Scott's, like... Tell it like at first he's like he has her act like a chicken and dance and do like right. the generic sort of like hypnotism jokes. Yeah, the the stroke and then eventually holding her nose and going under. Yeah, and then he's like, "Wait, she'll do anything that I ask." Yeah, that and, didn't get dark real quick. Uh, yeah, it's su yeah super gross. But so he whispers something into her ear. We can pretty well assume it's something sexual. Yeah, he gets uh, slapped. Yeah, she slaps him, and he's like, "Oh, okay, so not anything." anything. Yeah. Which is good. <laughs> yeah, and so he's like, okay, well, wake up, Mary. We got to get out of here. So they start to kind of, like, make their way out. And then we get this bit where, like, in case you haven't been paying enough attention, Victor is frustrated and is, like, talking. I think he's talking to Igor, and he basically mm -hmm. just lists everything that's happened in the movie so far. <laughs> right. All the complicated subplots. And he's like, okay, so... So Hathaway's after this guy. So then they're chasing her. And so she's here. And like just right. He's basically also then coming up with plans on how to get rid of each monster so he can get Scott. Yeah. And the, the best one is that, so the way they're going to defeat Dracula is we'll set the clocks back one hour. One hour. <laughs> so he doesn't realize the sun's about to come up and doesn't get in his coffin in time and, and yeah. will get you shrivel up like a raisin. That's right. Um, and so then... We see upstairs, Scott and Mary are about to head out, but they're stopped by Dracula. And Scott, to try to, like, ward off Dracula, holds up the Star of David. I'm not going to lie. Anytime I see that joke 
for a vampire, I am, I'm here for it. I love it. I don't know why I love it. I guess it's the juxtaposition of what you expect with, obviously, what you don't. So, I'm here for it. Anytime you want to bust out the Star of David to defeat vampires, I'm for it. And it's it's really nice too because you know I mean like usually when people hold up a cross out of like you know you usually like you have like the two sticks that you form yeah. a cross with so he's got like two pieces <laughs> that he holds up that combine together to to form the star of David mm-hmm. and he's like get you know get back I've seen all those old movies and he's <laughs> like not recently you haven't right <laughs> um, so again they like they take off running but eventually Scott and Mary are sort of surrounded by everybody you know you got. The, the, the vampires and the wolf and the you know Hathaway and Victor and Igor so they're they're clearly not getting away they all get caught and we get another iffy 90s joke where they're like you'll never get away with this and I can't remember even who says it but they're like that's what they said to Ted Kennedy yeah I think that was Victor <laughs> actually <laughs> which oof oof yeah yikes yep you know this this movie it straddles the line but I think it comes out on the better end, but still, it's it's getting a little rough around the edges. Yeah, it's got a lot of offensive jokes, but they're all sort of like specifically aimed at the offensive thing. Per- like, yeah. you know, it's a, a joke about how Clinton sucks and how Cosby sucks and how mm-hmm. Ted Kennedy sucks, and so it's like and Woody, uh, Woody Allen. Allen. Yeah, so you know, it's mm-hmm. got a pretty good track record of like taking down all these terrible guys a peg. So yeah. I mean, good for so them on that, it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just gets really close sometimes is all. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, then uh, we eventually find Victor and Igor, and uh, we have Hathaway basically talking about how he's, you know, he's going to be the one to sacrifice the kids because the king, Elvis, needs to be restored. And is it Victor or is it Igor who sneaks up behind him and slaps Priscilla on his back? It's it's Victor, which it seems like more of an Igor type joke, which makes it a little funnier coming from like the <laughs> slightly ser- more serious Victor. But yeah, he puts a sign on Hathaway's back that says Priscilla. Mm-hmm. Um, so then Mummy Elvis thinks that Hathaway is Priscilla, his wife. Yeah, um, and obviously Priscilla, being arguably a cishet man, has yeah. something to say about it. Yeah, so so Hathaway gets dragged into the sarcophagus and is like, I may be from Hollywood, but I'm not that type of guy. This is definitely like a mid-90s kind of joke mm. because, you know, like, we're going to make jokes about gay people, but we're not, like, he, they never even say the word gay. Like, you know, right. it's, I wouldn't say it's it, exactly at the expense of gay people, but it's still using, you know, homosexuality as a... You punch know, line. as something, yeah, as a punchline, basically. So not the greatest thing, but, you know, I guess it could be worse. Yeah, could be worse, could be better. Uh, yeah. So then we get a really, fun, like, weird 90s joke, uh, like, that was uh, really great. Victor says something about, you know, pretty soon the monster won't be brainless. And then the monster does an impersonation from of Beavis, Beavis <laughs> from Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which seems like a weird thing because it seems like they'd be like that. That's not going to be a that timely joke will will die. Nah, but yeah. But surprisingly, it's you know there's actually currently while we're recording this a new Beavis and Butthead TV show going on. So right. But in the mid two thousands, this joke was dated. <laughs> not anymore, obviously. But right. For a short period of time. Then we get Dracula and Igor fighting over Mary, and Igor just like in the middle of the fight is like, "You're already defeated, and you don't even know it because we mm-hmm. set the clocks back and the sun's out." And Dracula, well, yeah, like, he's like, he's like, "Hey, do you know what my favorite book is? The sun also rises." <laughs> right. Yeah. So then he like pulls. There's like a skylight that's got a cover on it, and he pulls it back, and then the sunlight comes in. But Natasha pops up. She's in a coffin, and there's an coffin next to her that she opens and is like hurry jump in she's like dracula honey don't you know you should have been in bed an hour ago <laughs> yeah so yeah like it basically completely defeats the whole plan like instantly mm-hmm. uh he gets in the coffin and you know so they close up and so now it's like you know victor's like all right well, well while they're in there it's time we can proceed with the transplant yeah the, finally the monster will have a, a mind of its own even if it belongs to someone else <laughs> And then we find out that they're not even going to do brain surgery. It's right. like they're just going to put like the like hair salon hair dryer helmet things on and just like somehow magically, you know, transfer the consciousness. You're being way too generous. That is absolutely just a colander with wires on it. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> But then we, we get like a really great sort of ending gag here where Victor's like, okay, Igor, you put the helmet on the boy and I'll put the helmet on the monster and we'll, then you can finally throw the lever. And we get this like little flashback where Igor sees all of the moments from the movie where Victor has berated and, and slapped him around and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hmm, okay. And he's like, hey, um, master... How does this work again? What what am I supposed to do with this helmet? And Victor's like, just put it on his head. And he's like, can you, show me how does how does it work? And right. so Victor's you know like, I'm stupid, right? <laughs> and Victor's like, all right, you idiot. So Victor puts the helmet on himself, and uh, Igor puts the helmet on himself, and then throws the lever. And what happens when you throw the lever? You get a brain transfer. Yeah. So now we've got. Igor inside, or Igor's consciousness inside the body of Victor Frankenstein, and mm. you know Victor inside Igor's body. Which is really weird, hearing John Cassier's voice coming out of Bobby Pickett's mouth, and <laughs> yeah. vice versa. <laughs> yeah, they do a pretty good job of like audio syncing this, so it, it comes out pretty. Like I, I expected that they were just going to do impressions of each other, but they they did like the voice sync. That would have been so much better though if they did impressions of each other. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been interesting to see how that that mm-hmm. would have come out. But so you know, now Igor's the master. You know, at first, like Bobby Boris Pickett is like kind of hunched over, as if like Igor is still remembering being hunched over. But then he's like, "Wait, no, I'm the master," and he just right. like stands up straight and he's like, "You're the, you know, you're the assistant now. You're the hunchback." And he starts kind of like, you know, beating on you know on the Igor body on you know Victor. Yeah. Victor. Um, idiot and, all that. Yeah. and so while that's all going on, Mary wakes up and is able to set Scott free from, you know, him being tied up for the surgery. Mm-hmm. And they kind of like apologize and realize that like, you know, it's, we do really love each other. We've just been put in this really stressful situation and, you know, we, we were taking it out on each other. So mm-hmm. let's get out of here. So they kind of escape and they're like, uh, and Scott's like, Next year, we can go to Debbie's party, the one you wanted to go to. And she's like, yeah, and, and I'll drive so we don't right. get lost. <laughs> exactly. And, of course, Wolfie finally comes back into the picture. He's like, Mom, I'm going to be the, my own man. And, yeah. <laughs> and then the, the last bit is, so everybody's left, and the creature is just still tied up to the slab by himself in the lab. And he's like, I'm surrounded by idiots. By idiots. <laughs> By the way, we, we we skipped over the part where he did the Jack Nicholson impression while he was doing the charades with uh, Igor. This monster doesn't need a new brain. His brain's fine. He just doesn't choose. He chooses to be nonverbal at points. Let the yeah. man be. Yeah. Yeah. So clearly here, you know, he's he's perfectly capable of talking. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and then so we then, get the re- reprise of Monster Bash. Yeah. They just basically play the whole song again with. It starts with just like random clips of the movie, mm-hmm. uh, and then it turns into the credits. And so then we have like you know the the, the thing where it's like you know stills of the actor you know well, from actually, the movie. Well, actually, did you notice this? There were there were sections that we didn't see in the movie that we do see in this this ending thing, in this mm. ending montage. We actually see the creation of the monster as uh, Victor is creating it and seeing oh. it. So no, yeah, I, like, didn't. I was working in my lab late one night. And we actually see him flipping the switches and the monster rise. Okay, so nice. I was like, why Why wasn't that just in the movie? That would have been fun. I guess it didn't make much sense, though, because, you know, we have the kids and it would be weird if the monster had just been created. Yeah, I, don't I guess that makes sense. But yeah. but yeah, so we, you know, we get like eventually, you know, freeze frames of the various like actors while they're like credits or you know, their names mm-hmm. underneath and everything. Uh, and we do get one last, um, one little new bit also where when it gets to the, you know, he, op- he opened the lid and shook his fist, you know, uh, Dracula who had hidden in the coffin because of the sunlight mm-hmm. pops back out of the coffin and, you know, does the, whatever happened to my Transylvania, Transylvania twist. twist. Yeah. 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 And then we get, it fades to black and we get like the, the rest of the song over just like the, the other, you know, the, the rest of the credits. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and that's the Monster Mash. You know, no abrupt ending, but also no science wheel. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this one. Yeah. Yeah, there there's without having like the real creation scene other than that, that brief moment, you don't get much science gear at all other than the lever. Lever. 
uh, and the the colander hats. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, but you know what? The, the movies, it's it like we said, it skirts the line, but it's it airs more towards funny, and it doesn't it does not punch down. It absolutely punches up. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's silly, it's campy, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like we said, like if if you have seen Rocky Horror and enjoyed that, this is kind of um, it's the more it's, tame version. Yeah, it's it's in a similar vein. It's definitely a lot less sexy, but mm-hmm. um, but it's yeah, it's still in a similar vein. Yeah, um, I mean, arguably not much, not much less sexy. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's there's more exposed skin in Rocky Horror, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun. It's a good time, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I feel like you know most people know the Monster Mash, but probably have not actually like seen Bobby Boris Pickett. And here's a chance to kind of like spend some time with him, being a weirdo and seeing the the guy behind the song. He's a good, he's a good he's a good Frankenstein. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, and and, and Kassir is a fantastic fantastic keyboard. keyboard. Just, so just give me one show where John Kassir is everything. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he definitely needs to be in more things. Yeah, absolutely. And But unfortunately, we lost Bobby Boris Pickett back in 2007. So unfortunately, yeah. we won't have any new... I mean, we might have new renditions of the Monster Mash, but it won't be with the original. Yeah. On that exciting note, sorry, Anthony. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I could do a little bit more monsters and mashing, okay? So, yeah. so what are we doing next time? So next week we're continuing. We're going to do the other movie called Monster Mash, which is from 2000. Oh. Uh, and so the one we did this time I had seen before. This this other one from 2000 I've not seen. Um, it is I, I know it's animated, and that's about all I know about it. So mm-hmm. um, I, I have it. I'm excited to check it out. But we'll, we'll find out how it is next week, I guess. That's exciting. All right. I'm ready for it. Okay, Anthony, in that case, where can they find us, my man? Uh, you can find us uh, on Twitter and Instagram at the Frankencast. You can email us at thefrankencast at gmail.com. And you can find us, or you can also find us on YouTube. Uh, and then, of course, you can find us at patreon.com slash thefrankencast, uh, where we do, like, we actually recently did an episode talking about a different monster song. So, you yeah. know, there's a. There's a lot of kind of fun nonsense over there, things that don't fit into the, the normal um, format of the, the main feed here. Yeah, there's absolutely a lot of wild content over there. So check it out if you want to. Obviously, you don't have to pay money. But any interaction is great. Just let us know what you think on any of the socials. And, you know, that's that's just as good in our opinion. Yeah, we're absolutely. There, we're there for all of it, especially Twitter. Yep, of course. All right, anything else we can got to say? I think that's it. All right, well, in that case... To be continued. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaky Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaky Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening. <laughs>